Hi everybody. Today I'm going to be tying a fly known as Waltz Worm. Um, you'll be able to find videos of this fly elsewhere on the internet, but I'm trying to kind of analyze and investigate uh, another area of that of that fly. Um, and I got the idea just to to bring this video after I was reading this book called um, The Master's Fly Box by David Klossmeyer. Um, in this book, he he interviews various fly fishermen and guides and basically basically asks them about the flies that they really enjoy using on rivers and lakes. One of the articles is uh, is when David interviews Eric Straub, a friend of mine that guides out of central Pennsylvania around Little Juniata and Spruce Creek and some other um, streams in that area. And in that in that article, that's where Eric mentions Walt's worm as one of his go-to flies whenever he's guiding and fishing. And there's also a video on the internet of Eric tying that fly. Uh, I didn't want to you know, steal Eric's thunder or anything, but I'm just going to vary the fly just a little tad by adding a hot spot to it. Hot spots have become very popular in fly fishing over uh, the last few years, and a hot spot is just a very brightly color um, that could be on the on the bend of the fly or at the eye of the fly that will kind of attract the fish somehow. Um, there's lots of materials you can use for hot spots. I'll try to zoom in on these. Let me see if I can get this thing working. Uh, a simple one is just to get some some fluorescent yellow thread or orange or color of, of that of the or color similar to this. This is Danville's four strand nylon. This is another really popular one right now. It's called Globrite. I believe it's out of Great Britain. It's called Globrite. This is a um, Globrite fluorescent floss um, and it's something that's been kind of getting a little bit of popularity and most tires will put this near the um, the eye of the fly and just put a couple couple wraps of this at the very end. Something else you can use, this is Hairline's Ice Dub Orange, but it's a very bright color. And then what I'm going to be tying Waltz Worm with today is uh, some tungsten beads. These are made by Rip Lips. Their website is riplipsfishing.com. Let's see if I can kind of zoom in a little bit more on those. And uh, they're chartreuse. So not only will these provide a little bit of extra weight for this fly, this Waltz Worm will be on the bottom immediately, but they're also chartreuse colored, which will kind of be like another little indicator for that fish, it's something to grab its attention. So I am varying this fly just a little bit, uh, and just to give you a little bit of background on the Waltz Worm, I believe it was meant to be tied as a crane fly imitation, but um, we, we use them as caddis imitations and uh, scud imitations as well. Um, you can pick out the fly, do, do lots of other stuff with it, but I'll tell you that while I'm tying the fly. So I'm going to be tying the Waltz Worm today with a hotspot chartreuse tungsten bead indicator. This is the completed Waltz Worm. Um, this is with the, um, the Hairs Ear Plus dubbing. I'll be showing you how to tie this in a second, but if you notice, there is a nice tapered body to this, kind of like a cigar or a carrot taper, for, uh, starting a little smaller, finer at the back, and building up towards the head. I have the tungsten um, hotspot, which is just simply a tungsten uh, fly tying bead from Rip Lips Fishing. And that's really all there is to this fly. The one thing that I did not, I'm not showing at the end of the video, but I'll just show quickly now, is just taking a little piece of Velcro and simply scraping it all along the fly and really picking out everything on this fly. Now this is a size 10, um, I think a 1x long nymph hook. That's, I typically don't pick out the, the larger ones, but whenever I'm tying size 16s and 18s of this pattern, then I use that Velcro to really pick it out a little bit more. But this is the Waltz Worm um, with the hotspot indicator. I'm going to show you how to okay, tie Okay, let's this start right tying now. this uh, Waltz Worm. I've already put on the bead this as I think I showed you before, these are the Rip Lips Tungsten Fly Tying Beads. Um, this is a size 10 hook, and it's a 3 32nd bead, or a 2.5 millimeter bead. Um, the hook can vary. Um, I tie it anywhere between size 10 and 18, somewhere in that range. I've heard of guys tying this the whole way down to 22. Uh, I've never used them that small. I'm not saying they wouldn't work, but I've just never had a reason to go that small, unless they're kind of trying to imitate the caddis. I'm putting some lead wire on it right now to build this up. Um, this is a pretty heavy fly when it gets into the water. The lead wire that I use on it is the 0.15 or 0 0.015 uh, lead wire. I'm just going to get it on there. Sometimes I'll put I'll put thread on this wire and then I'll put a little bit of glue um, or some type of head cement afterwards. I'm not going to for the sake of this video, but that's something that you can do as well. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit so you can see what I'm doing on this fly. So I'm gonna, I am gonna coat the body. I'm just kind of tucking that that wire in. I'm gonna coat the body with uh, tan tying thread. Just so I can ensure that it's locked into place. 
And I have read, I, I have read in a couple places that whenever uh, this fly was originally developed, um, that the creator would dub from the eye of the hook back to the bend, and then put on a second series of dubbing wrap from the back of the hook to the eye. Um, I don't tie it that way. I just tie from the bend back up. But that's something that I have read before. The dubbing, it seems you want to be very specific whenever you're, you're dubbing this fly. And the dubbing that's, it's, that it calls for is the um, Hairline Hair's Ear Plus dubbing, the Natural Hair's Ear number one. This seems to be the popular dubbing, the dubbing of choice for this fly. I'm going to dub this on, and, and as I mentioned, Eric Straub does have a video of this fly, and he gives you a really good tip on it. Whenever you're, pull, you're pulling out this dubbing, it's very easy to get this, the body of this fly built up way too quickly. This is the one fly that when I dub, I really seem to take my time. Whenever you pull this dubbing out, you just want to pull out loose strands, dub them onto your thread, and put it on that way, or else it'll get built up too quick. And we don't want to build up that body too quick at all. As mentioned in some of the other videos, you want to taper this so it looks kind of like a cigar or a, um, a carrot taper tapering from the back towards the eye of the hook. I'm just gently putting this on. I didn't, I'm not touch dubbing or anything like that. I'm just simply dubbing it onto this thread. I'm going to make sure I have all the, that wire covered. I don't want that showing through at all. And you can see that that chartreuse bead really seems to kind of jump out as you get this fly built. I have not tied this fly with a thread um, or a floss hotspot, but that's something to consider as well, depending on how much weight you want to get on it. In this case, in this pattern, I want this fly and this particular one of this size to go down to the bottom. I really do want to be fishing this on the very bottom and having that 0 0.015 lead wire body and a tungsten bead for the at the top is going to really ensure that this fly is getting down there. Now as I get closer to the eye, whenever I use uh, any type of bead head at the top, I really like to dub as close to that as possible and really lock that bead in place. I'm just going to put a few more touches of this dubbing on there before I finish the fly. You can see I have a nice taper going. It's a little bushier than normal, which is not a bad thing. In the smaller sizes, I do like to take a little piece of Velcro and pick out the body completely. Not a dubbing needle, but just a piece of rough Velcro. And I like to pick out the entire body, and it really makes it nice and shaggy, and it just picks up a lot of translucency in the water. Okay, so I have this fly. I've just did a single, um, a little half hitch to it. The fly is nearly complete. I'm just going to finish it off. Put a few turns in here. And that's really all I'm going to need because with that half hitch and that lock, I may put a little bit of head cement behind that. Otherwise, the fly is finished. It's that simple to tie. And with that chartreuse um, hotspot indicator, it's going to make it really, uh, really stand out to the fish. Sometimes, depending on how long some of these extra fibers are, I will pull them out. So I'm just going to pull out a few of them with my hackle pliers just because there are some really long fibers in there that I really don't feel is too desirable for this pattern. And I will attempt to show you if I can find my little piece of uh, Velcro, which I don't think I'm going to be able to pull it out right now because this, this camera is kind of blocking it in place. But as mentioned, I will take a little piece of Velcro and simply just rub it back and forth the whole way around that fly just to make sure that body's picked out. So this is a very simple fly. Again, this is the, the Waltz Worm with a hot spot, a chartreuse tungsten bead as an indicator, which will really help to um, kind of make this fly stand apart. And it's just a little bit different because that Waltz Worm is very popular in a lot of the, the streams and rivers in this area. And this will just be that little something you can do to separate your fly. Actually, this is what I'm doing to separate my fly from yours. So how about everyone else? You use different colors and I'll stick with the chartreuse. Well, anyway, thanks for watching the video, and if you have any questions, don't be afraid to uh, just post them on this site. Thanks again.